Hi, I'm Mark Lassoff from Framework. In my career, I've taught over 1.5 million people coding online, and I've seen a lot of mistakes. Mistakes are great, because as a new developer, you're sure to make them, and if you're smart, you'll learn from them. What's better than learning from your own mistakes? I like to learn from the mistakes other people make. It saves me time and embarrassment. So let's count down the top 10 beginner programmer mistakes. Number 10, coding without a plan. When I was a kid, first learning to code on my Commodore VIC-20, my planning process was I'd think about what I wanted to build and start writing Commodore Basic. Sometimes I'd get to the end with a successful project, but most of the time I'd create spaghetti code that didn't work and I couldn't figure out why. Of course, I was 12 and my attention span was short, but the point is I went in without a plan. I see way too many new developers who, when assigned a new coding problem, sit down and begin immediately writing code. That's the wrong answer. You need to make some type of plan. What functions do you need? How will you handle state? What properties will need to be tracked through the application lifespan? What will the user interface look like? A great planning tool for you is Figma, which will allow you to prototype an entire website or application. This will tell you down to the pixel where every element should appear. Number nine, inconsistent use of upper and lower case. I used to teach a lot of in-person classes. I've probably taught some form of programming for beginners course in a classroom 100 times. One of the most common questions I get is, is this case sensitive? My answer is always the same. If you act like everything is case sensitive, you'll never be wrong. Even if you're in an environment where case sensitivity doesn't matter, it's better to always be consistent with your upper and lower case. Why? Well, anything that makes code easier to read for the humans is a good idea. There are essentially two audiences for your code. The first is the interpreter that'll be processing your code, and the second is human developers who will often inherit your code when you go off and get a better job. Consistent capitalization is part of good software engineering and it's a practice you should put in place from the very beginning of your development career. Mistake number eight, not storing your work in a repository like GitHub. You ever wish you could go find that function you wrote a few weeks ago? Or have you ever lost code when you purchased a new laptop? I know that feeling. That's one of the reasons to store all your code in a GitHub repository. If you're not familiar with GitHub, it's a social code repository that allows you to store manage and retrieve code you've written. It also allows you to share code with others on your team or in public. I recommend that everyone learning development store everything they do in GitHub. Your GitHub can become an unofficial history of your learning as you progress. Perhaps the most important reason to store all of your code in GitHub as you're learning is that employers expect to look at your GitHub repository to get a sense of what you can do as you grow as a coder. GitHub has become the standard for developer interviews, so it's time for you to get on the GitHub train if you're not. Mistake seven, not using debugging tools. I'll never forget this one. I was teaching an advanced JavaScript course at a major publisher a few years back. Everyone in the class had been using JavaScript for six months or more in a production environment. One of the developers in class kept creating alert pop-ups to trace the value of our variables. She didn't know about the developer tools available in the browser. Now, in her defense, she was an excellent developer who'd been coding in C++ for her whole career and was new to web-based development. But the point remains, there are a number of excellent tools that are available to you as a developer. Most important among these are the debugging tools available right in your browser. Know them and use them. Every web development job I know of will expect you to know these debugging tools coming in. Mistake number six, using poor variable and function names. This is just lazy. Remember that we want to be good software engineers and make sure that our code is readable by other developers. If you aren't using clear, concise, consistent variable and function names, you'll want to improve this practice. Remember that variable names should generally be descriptive of the values or objects stored in the variable reference. Functions should be verbs and named after what they do. It's usually acceptable to use I or X as variable names only when they're being used as counters in loops, and some environments even frown upon that practice. I recommend always camel casing your variable names so that variable names that are comprised of more than one word are easy to read. 
comparing yourself to others, mistake number five. This one is less about your code and more about your mind and emotions. Learning enough coding and getting enough experience to get your first job can be a slog. There's a lot to learn, you have to build a portfolio. So remember, everyone learns differently and everyone learns at their own pace. So comparing yourself to others serves no purpose. There may be people who learn faster and others who learn slower. There may be people who are terrible at CSS and a wizard JavaScript. And at the end, it doesn't matter. You're learning for yourself and no one else. Whatever progress someone else makes isn't putting the next portfolio project in your GitHub repository. So don't worry about them and as Rocky Balboa said, keep moving forward. Mistake number four, confusion between libraries, languages, and frameworks. This one may seem unusual, but I see it a lot. Just like you have to learn the syntax and object model of a coding language, you have to learn your tools. Too often I hear confusion from new developers on languages, libraries, and frameworks. For the record, a language is a vocabulary and syntax for getting the computer to accomplish specific tasks. A library is a collection of resources that aid programmers in using a language. For example, jQuery is a JavaScript library that certainly makes accomplishing tasks in JavaScript easier. Finally, a framework is a comprehensive tool set for creating applications. Angular, for example, is a framework for building JavaScript applications. If you're a new developer, keep these straight in your mind so you describe them correctly in an interview. Number three, not tackling learning in the correct order. Learning is highly dependent on context or having something familiar to relate to. That's one of the reasons new developers have so much trouble with coding. There's often little context and nothing they can relate to in coding languages, so comprehending them is difficult. That's why I recommend starting with easier, more procedural languages like Python or even markup languages like HTML. This will help provide context later when you layer on heavy concepts like object-oriented programming. Remember, there's a difference between computer science and development. You need to be sure of which field you're learning. If you're learning computer science, you'll need to wade deep into technical concepts like algorithms and data structures. As a web developer, exposure to these deeper topics is helpful, but mastery often isn't necessary as you're starting your career. So start with easier languages and progress from there. Mistake number two, learning in isolation. There's a reason that the school model hasn't changed much over the last century. There are strong advantages to a social model when learning. If you're learning development in complete isolation, chances are you're gonna fail. We're social animals as humans, so it's important to us to have others to relate to, discuss things with, and bounce ideas off of. Whether you're learning online or in a traditional classroom setting, it's important that you take advantage of the social aspects of your learning environment. Almost every learning setting, at the very least, has a forum for you to talk with others who are walking the same path as you. Take advantage and get support when you need it to complete the path to your goal. And finally, the number one mistake made by beginning developers, not learning the right languages for beginners. This is similar to number three, learning in the wrong order. The choice of a first language is so critical. Back when I was in school, the first language was C because that's all there was. Believe it or not, C is pretty easy to learn. It has a limited command set and a consistent syntax that modern languages still imitate. However, today, many university programs dive full on into Java, which is an enterprise language. It's an important and powerful language, but I think it's a lousy place to start. The first line that many learn in Java is public, static, void, main, string, args. That requires you to understand six or seven separate development concepts to understand what that line means. That's a lot to expect of new developers without any context to work with. Some slog through, especially if they're trying to get a degree, but those who are learning on their own often stop dead in their tracks. I recommend that people follow this roadmap. It starts with the core languages for web development, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then we add in the most common libraries used, jQuery and Bootstrap. Once client-side development is mastered, we move on to server-side development where more complex languages like PHP, C-sharp, or Java can be used. 
However, at this point, you're much better positioned to learn these languages as you've developed a strong context with your previous experience. So that's my list of the top 10 mistakes that new programmers make. I hope it was helpful. Did I leave anything off the list? Do you have any mistakes that new programmers should be aware of yourself? Let me know. And thanks for watching. I'm Mark Lassoff for Framework.